it's a work about illusions and illusion. The work, the illusion uh, chronicle, chronicles the life of this country. <laughs> I'm simply an artist, that's what I do, that's what I've done all my life and that's, as I said, is the only thing I know how um, to do. So. Welcome to the 2024 Icon Showcase a feature of the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival, where we celebrate outstanding St. Lucians, described as pioneers, activists, conservationists, and leaders. Our pioneer today is also a member of the Order of the British Empire for his contributions to the world of art. And it is indeed a pleasure to be here this morning for the official opening of Llewellyn Xavier Art Exhibiting Exhibition Opening, sorry, comp, um, Exhibition, sorry, Poems from St. Lucia. My name is Natalie Jolie Fanis, and it is indeed a pleasure to be here and to welcome our first speaker responsible for this activity here today and the arts celebration for the 2024 Jazz and Arts Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Mr. Darwin Gard, Chairman of the Cultural Development Foundation, to speak to us about the ICON series. Mr. Gard. This morning for me is extremely special. Um, once again, the CDF gets a chance to tell a story, one, thank you, one that will and already has had tremendous impact on St. Lucia. This morning, we celebrate our 2024 national cultural icon, Mr. Llewellyn Zavi, with this grand exhibition. Icons don't normally do things in any small way. This morning, I'm going to use this exhibition to make you understand why it is that Mr. Zavi has been nominated as such. I remember the first time we came into this space we had some partitions up, and we invited Mr. Zavi a few days later. And he walked in, and he stood next to me, and he looked at the space, and he said, Mr. God, break down these partitions. Open it up. <laughs> but these are icons. That's what they do. They break down partitions and open up spaces. They make us do better. They make us ask ourselves, why aren't we able to if they have done so? Mrs. Ave grew up humble beginnings. Chozelle walking eight miles to school with no shoes. You know, sometimes when we see icons and the magnitude of a Mr. Zavier, Mr. Zavier, sometimes we find excuses. Oh, Icons are born, or they're privileged. Our story today is different. Mr. Zavi is asking each and every one of us to look in the mirror and ask, how can we do better? His simple, humble beginnings, but yet still has proven that at the end of the day, we all can. What Mr. Zavi has done for all of us is said, icons, are not born. They are forged. You have to decide for yourselves with the will to make the difference. And so this morning, it is an honor for the CDF to celebrate Mr. Zavi. Mr. Zavi has done this on all levels, individually, regionally, internationally. He's done it all. I look at the news today and I see all of the commentary on climate change. Mr. Zavi was an advocate 
years ago, years ago, I was this high, visiting his gallery space at Point Seraphin and seeing all these pieces about the environment. In 1993, Mr. Xavier, like he did with the CDF in this space, saying you can do better, asked world leaders to do better. He got signatures from world leaders and organizations involved in environmental uh, protection, and he asked them to sign one of his greatest works, the Global Council for Earth's Restoration in 1993. So when I look at CNN today, and I see all the climate change and the advocates, I say to myself, Darwin, imagine St. Lucia, the CDF, the government of St. Lucia, is honoring a man who had seen this years ago and was advocating long ago in the protection of the environment. Mr. Xavier is not self-proclaimed. He's one of the few artists that I know that it's not I. Most of the news on Mr. Xavier is he. He did this, he did that. He changed this, and he changed that. Meaning, he's been recognized by all organizations in his work. It's amazing how a man with very few words has done so much. He needs to tell me his secret. He's just done so much, a few words. He's asked us over and over again to do better, but with few words. This space, again, that I stand in today is an example of that. Darwin, break down the walls, open up the space. Fair enough. So the icon says to open up the space, you open up the space. But what's even more interesting with Mr. Xavier and his approach to this that we've learned in this process is this. He doesn't open up the space for himself. That's the magic of Mr. Xavier. It's not about him. It's never about him. Open up the space so that more people can come in. Let's create inclusion. Let's get more people in here so that they can see and experience art. Not necessarily my work but the magic and the transcending power of art. And he goes beyond. And he goes even beyond that. When he invites us in his space, he shares himself. When you interact with Mr. Xavier's work, it becomes very intimate. You interact with Mr. Xavier. Mr. Xavier can exit this building right now, and I can guarantee you when you walk through this and you do this journey, you have met the man. He's not pretentious. His work is him. He's fearless. He's bold. And again, he asks us to do better. If you have your belief in something, do it. And so today, Mr. Xavier is sharing himself and some of his personal stories in his art. A St. Lucian at heart, by the way. I visited Mr. Xavier at his house, and there is not one time I have been and he's not spoken about St. Lucia. Darwin, this place is magnificent. It's beautiful. Darwin, Zapal <laughs> Equayal. And I'll be like, yeah, my God. Mm -mm 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 -mm, stop. Mm -mm -mm -mm, stop. You can't. Usage your castry. I was like, yeah, so I'll stop. All of Mrs. Avi's interviews, when you listen about why and how he's inspired, it goes down to the book and villiers, the colors, topography, the land, the people. Mr. Zavi is completely in love with this island. I have no doubt in my mind, and you can see it in his work. He's constantly talking about this island, an ambassador for this country. He's taken us in museums that some people wish they could be. Smithsonian, MoMA, the Met, 
I mean, I spent time in New York and I met some artists who wished that they could even probably go in there and have a conversation to have a piece up on a wall. But Mr. Zavi has taken us in the art world in places that a lot wish they could be. When I look at this space, I understand what icons are about. They're truly about making us better, do better. They are constantly saying do better. This process for me in the beginning, in the beginning was the most frustrating. You can hear him chuckle, he knows why. Most frustrating. However, today I stand here and on behalf of CDF, the board and staff, I can safely say that Mr. Xavier has taught us so much. And not giving up, pursuing, trying your best. I have learned more out of this experience as the chairman of CDF, I think, than I did as a student at St. Mary's College. And that is Mr. Xavier for you. It's not about Mr. Zavi. And that's what this story today is about, this particular icon. It's not about me. It has never been about me. I'm not going to take up much of your time this morning, because most of you here know Mr. Zavi. But I will end on this note. And I send this one to the minister, and I hope the prime minister was as well, and to myself, the chair. After all of this experience, right, I thought to myself, hmm, I think Mr. Zavi blindsided me on this one. He kind of tricked me driving up here. And I said to myself, this exhibition, what is this truly about? And Mr. Zavi, I think I figured this out. If you keep saying that this is truly not about me, then what is this about? Again, this is typical of the icon and why we celebrate them the way we do. Mr. Xavier is saying to us today in this room, I heard this conversation years ago, St. Lucia, about finding a space to exhibit work. Years upon years, can't find a space. But today, I know Mr. Zavi is standing and he's saying, you did it in a month and a half. You could have always put this space together. If Mr. Zavi were to say to myself, the Honorable Minister and the Prime Minister today, that, listen, I love my country so much that I'm willing to donate this entire show to the citizenry of St. Lucia. Here's the ultimate question he's asking. Where would we put it? And I think this exhibition is again Mr. Zavi in this time and this space saying, we can do better. Thank you very much. If you didn't get that passion, Darwin himself is an artist. And they say it's not about them. But we know him as a young man from St. Mary's College being an artist. So you understand why he is so inspired and why he resonates with this particular icon. Do you, do you understand why now? Am I hearing a round of applause? This is the legacy of people like Mr. Zavi. So this project, the Cultural Icons Project, is meant to be an inspirational project. And it has as its patron an icon herself, who needs no introduction here today, I'm sure. Ladies and gentlemen, to present the citation for Mr. Llewellyn Zavi, I invite the patron of the Icon Recognition Program, Her Excellency Dame Paulette Louisi. Ladies and gentlemen, I know why I took so long to decide on my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, I've been working on it. And there you are. 
I thought to myself, you know, I can't come here, you know, in dull colors. This is a vibrant gentleman. And so, <laughs> hear ye, all citizens of St. Lucia, whereas Llewellyn Xavier, born in St. Lucia in 1945, has illuminated the art world with his visionary talent and transformative works, which have been celebrated on a global stage, from the Caribbean shores to the halls of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Smithsonian Institute, and beyond. Whereas, his pioneering spirit was evident from his early days in Barbados through to his profound exhibitions in major art capitals, including a notable solo exhibition at Phillips in New York, where he was hailed by CEO Edward Dolman as, and I quote, one of the greatest artists ever to emerge from the Caribbean. End of quote. <laughs> Whereas Mr. Xavier's innovative male art in the 1960s set a precedent for future artistic communication across borders, while his Global Council for Restoration of the Earth's Environment project became a seminal model for integrating environmental activism with artistic expression. Whereas his technique of using multicolored pearls of paint to capture the vibrancy of the Caribbean landscape has not only enriched the visual arts, but also pioneered new ways of seeing and experiencing color and form. Whereas awarded the OBE in, Mr. Xavier has been continuously recognized for his leadership and philanthropy. Mr. Xavier has demonstrated a notable spirit of generosity and dedication to the cultivation of young talent. He has imparted his extensive knowledge and insights to inspire and nurture aspiring visual artists, thus ensuring a vibrant future for the artistic community in his homeland. Therefore, be it resolved that Llewellyn Xavier be formally recognized as the Cultural Development Foundation's 2024 National Cultural Icon. Celebrating his enduring contributions to our national and cultural heritage, his tireless advocacy for environmental stewardship, and his inspirational role as both a profound artistic visionary and a mentor to future torchbearers of art and culture in St. Lucia and beyond. And be it further resolved that his enduring legacy and artistic achievements continue to fuel national pride and enhance our collective identity on the global stage. In witness whereof, we have Heron to set our hands and uh, caused the seal of the Cultural Development Foundation to be affixed this third day of May, 2024. <laughs> and the we who have um, set our hands and who have signed this piece is 
Her Excellency Dame Paulette C. Louise, <laughs> patron, National Cultural Icon Program, and Mr. Darwin Gard, chairperson of the Cultural Development Foundation. Congratulations. Thank you. So, it is my greatest pleasure to call on a man of the hour, of the day, of the, and today and tomorrow and forever, Ms. Llewellyn Zandi. From the Cultural Development Foundation. I Let think. me just say a few words about this piece that Mr. Xavier is completely unaware of. It is so shocked. Correct. For the first time. Correct. <laughs> He's saying, who has stolen my work? My work. <laughs> so, so, over the last... Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. Over the last three weeks, um, oh, longer than that, um, Mr. Xavier has oh, right been preparing wow. work, in front of the Darwin. Chronicles of St. Lucia. But that, but that said, we had some interns who was working with him. So we called his dear wife, Christina, and we asked her to just put some pieces together and so that the interns, who is not here today, I wish he was, Kiani, to put it together. So what they learned in the three weeks, they came to my office, they learned how to frame, mat, and so this you see here is from the interns who worked with Mr. Zavi, and we felt that we needed to present it in this way. Thank you so much. Please welcome Honorable Dr. Ernest Hiller to offer remarks. Um, I'm really delighted this morning to be speaking here. And after listening to Darwin and Dim, I was wondering why, should, why did they set me up like that? I should speak first <laughs> and everybody speak after because I sh surely I cannot keep up um, with the standard that, I've, that has been set. Um, but I'm really delighted for you know, my dear friend um, for, for today. And, you know, and of course, I'm not one who usually reads speeches, but one was prepared for me. And I must say, I must read it, or else I'll be in a lot of trouble. So um, please bear with me, but it's an excellent speech, so I was really happy when I, I read it. But I kept thinking, you know, of, you know, Llewellyn and what he means to to St. Lucia, having encountered him when I lived in London, and I know the appreciation that exists for him, and he deserved this, and this had to be done. And when I got the news that it was going to be done, I was one of the happiest persons you could find. So today, to actually see it come to fruition is a very special day. But back to my speech. My pride is immense today at the official opening of poems from St. Lucia, featuring the illustrious work of our 2024 cultural icon, Mr. Llewellyn Xavier. What we're about to view is the largest one-person exhibition to be mounted in St. Lucia, which is a compelling reminder of the profound influence art holds over our cultural and historical narrative. Today, as part of the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival, under the resounding theme, erecting our pantheon of excellence, we celebrate not only artistic genius, but the seminal role of artists in the construction of our national identity. Art and culture are the lenses through which we perceive and appreciate our past, confronting and embracing it to forge a shared future. Mr. Xavier, through his vibrant canvases and his insightful installations, has not only depicted the unique St. Lucian landscape and its beauty, 
but has meticulously documented our societal evolutions and historical move moments. His work acts as a mirror reflecting our collective memory and as a map guiding our understanding of who we are as a people. The government of St. Lucia recognizes the intrinsic value of the creative arts as a pillar of both social and economic development. We are committed to nurturing an environment where art thrives not only for its aesthetic value, but as a fundamental component of our national discourse. Mr. Xavier's engagement with themes such as envir environmental conservation and sustainable development resonates deeply with our governmental priorities. His arts transcends the visual to participate actively in that crucial dialogue that is shaping the world over and right here at home, and of course, enlightening, increasing social enlightenment. By documenting our heritage and advocating through his art, Mr. Xavier contributes significantly to the cultural edifices that define our nation. His commitment to excellence and creative endeavor is integral to St. Lucia's stature on the global stage, enhancing our cultural diplomacy and showcasing the richness of our culture and our artistic heritage. Indeed, while government-led social development initiatives are impactful, there is nothing more transformative for young people than the power of example set by someone whose early beginnings they can relate to. This morning, as we unveil poems from St. Lucia, we do so not just in celebration of Mr. Xavier's artistic achievements, but in acknowledgement of the critical role that he and artists like him play in elevating our national conversation and embodying the pride of our people. In that regard, the Icon series plays a crucial role, not only in documenting the remarkable contributions of distinguished cultural and creative figures, but also in sharing their stories and showcasing their achievements. This serves as a vital source of inspiration, demonstrating the profound impact that individual creativity and persistence can have on society. So, government welcomes this partnership through the Cultural Development Foundation and our distinguished creatives. Let us continue to work together to support and celebrate the arts, for through them, we understand our past, navigate our present, and envision our future. On behalf of the Cultural Development Foundation and the government of St. Lucia, I extend our deepest gratitude to Mr. Llewellyn Zavi. Thank you for your contribution to our cultural legacy and for your continued engagement in the pressing issues of our times. Your work builds upon the foundation of pride and excellence, ensuring that St. Lucia commands a unique space on the global stage. Enjoy this magnificent exhibition and join me in applauding the visionary work of our esteemed national cultural icon 2024, Mr. Llewellyn Zavi. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the Philip J. Pierre administration for really bringing the art into, into focus. Um, really, I, they, I, I think a lot is being done for the arts. I, I've driven down castries and I see what is being done. And of course the CDF. Um, when we first started, I thought, I really don't want these people to come up to my house. <laughs> And, and once or twice, they came unannounced and uninvited. I said, what? This has never happened before. I said, sort of from upstairs, I had somebody say, um, oh, Miss Holder, who is absolutely lovely, honestly. And I, you know, she's downstairs. What is she doing here? And, she's downstairs, and in my studio, if you don't mind. I mean, my wife does not go into my working space without, my, without me. But of course, all this time, they were, you know, getting up to something which I didn't know anything about. So I, you really don't want to see the exhibition. It gives me immense pride on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia to declare this year's I cultural icon series open. Please, let's enjoy the exhibition.